Previously on the Carbide Camp Knife series, through cardboard mockups, CAD modeling, and 3D printed prototypes, we arrived at a comfortable design for our knife. With the assistance of a water jet, we also got knife blanks that are within a millimeter of their final profile. But the convenience of not having to tediously cut around our knife profiles with an end mill comes with some extra logistical challenges. If I had simply started with a rectangular sheet of steel, I could have bolted or clamped it to the Nomad and machined a lot of the critical features at once without worrying about locating everything. Instead, now I have to precisely locate and work hold these irregularly shaped blanks. These are impossible to clamp in a vise, and even if I machine some soft jaws to conform to the shape of the blanks, the machine profiles of the soft jaws would never perfectly match up to the profile left by the water jet. What I need are some custom fixtures to precisely locate my parts. More so, I need to be able to shuffle around my clamping locations to ensure complete access to every square inch of my knife blanks. Let me walk you through my thought process for designing these fixtures. I first started by figuring out how I was going to lay out the knives. My knife design is just over 8 and 3 eighths of an inch long, which rules out aligning it with the X or Y axes. It would overhang the work area of the Nomad like that. But a knife could fit diagonally on the table, and in fact you can fit two knives on the Nomad that way. So I started designing a work holding fixture with two stations to hold my knife blanks in mirrored orientations. The first station would let me face one side of the knife flat in addition to boring out the pinholes in the handle to an exact dimension. In this case, 3 16 of an inch. The knife blank would be located by dropping it into a known pocket. A little slop here is okay because of the extra material I programmed the water jet to leave behind. There is a measurable margin for error here. Station 2 would be where I'd face the other side of the blanks and trim the profile of the knife to its final dimensions. Here I need to capture the position of the blank more precisely. Because I machined those 3 16 inch holes in the previous station, I need to reference those when locking in the X and Y position and orientation of my blade. The profile of the knife needs to be precisely located relative to those pinholes, otherwise the edges of the scales that I machine later might not line up perfectly with the edges of the steel handle. I'll have holes for 3 16 inch pins in my fixture and use those to align my part before clamping down on the blanks with 832 screws. Since I'll be using a corner radius end mill to profile around the entire perimeter of the blade, I want to overshoot the bottom of my blank by the radius of the end mill so that the walls are vertical. I need to make some clearance around the blade so that the end mill can focus on machining steel instead of plowing into the aluminum that my fixtures will be made out of. Sprinkled around stations 1 and 2 are going to be more holes for 832 fasteners. Between these two stations I'll be able to bring my knife blanks to their nominal length, width, and thickness. I could also bevel the blades in this setup, but for my sanity, it's easier to isolate these toolpaths to separate operations with their own stations. Speaking of stations 3 and 4, I'm going to design very similar pockets to receive the knife blanks for beveling. The pockets here don't need to be very deep, just enough to capture the profile of the knife blanks. The material of choice for my custom fixtures is aluminum, and I'm going to be machining it from both sides for efficient material usage. Since I plan on threading into my fixture and those threads have to be strong enough to hold against the forces and vibrations of machining steel, plastic was not an option. Plus, I trust aluminum to be relatively dimensionally stable and flat, at least after I machine it. The stock that I have is Mike 6 cast aluminum plate which people buy specifically for flatness, but it doesn't come from the manufacturer perfectly flat. The thickness tolerance on the stock that I bought off McMaster is plus or minus 5 thou. That's plus or minus nearly 0.13 millimeters for you metric folks, and that means that between the high spots and low spots, I could see a variation of up to 10 thou, which would cause a good deal of trouble when I'm machining steel on the Nomad. That is a sizable fraction of my expected depth of cut. The only surfaces you can trust are the ones you've machined, so I machined everything, both faces of my stock and even the table on my Nomad, which is also Mike 6 and subject to the same tolerances. This was done with a quarter inch single flute cutter, which the Nomad is able to handle for such a shallow cut, plus it leaves a beautiful surface finish on the plates. I machined counterboard holes so I could bolt my fixture down, I also machined pin holes in my table to match up with the ones in my fixture so I could repeatedly load or remove my fixture from the Nomad. For a lot of the roughing of my fixture's features, I used adaptive toolpaths with an eighth inch single flute cutter. My maximum step down was limited not by the machine, but by how deep my pockets were, between 20 to 40 thou, or roughly half a millimeter to one millimeter. For those depths of cut, I chose an optimal load of 15 thou. Then I would come back with both pocketing and contour toolpaths to clean up all the surfaces. With the contour toolpath around the perimeter of the blade pocket, I incrementally adjusted my stock to leave until my knife blanks easily dropped in. 
I also carefully adjusted the stock to leave on my pinhole so that they would be a tight but still free fit for my 3 16th inch pins. With the sizing of my pockets confirmed, I went through a couple manual operations to finish the fixtures. To ensure my tapped holes had good threads, I wanted to drill out the holes that I'd roughed in on the CNC but left slightly undersized. With such small threads, I didn't want to accidentally overbore these holes and end up with shallower threads. I bought a short length drill bit for this job and it was pretty easy to open up these holes to a nominal diameter in the drill press. Then I tapped these holes for 832 threads, did a little deburring with a countersink bit, and these knife holding stations are good to go. Custom fixturing is not only really useful for dealing with oddly shaped parts, but also for situations where you want to make multiples of something. It's precise, secure, and faster to load. If you're engraving dog tags or plaques or something else in batches, spending some time upfront on fixturing will not only make your life easier, you'll get a better product out of it. In the next episode of the Carbide Camp Knife series, we'll put my custom fixturing to the test and see if my plan to machine these knife blanks holds up or if there's a fatal flaw in my strategy.